Good morning, and this time I'm back with the summary of an ovarian cancer guideline from BGCS. I hope this will help you for your revision of MRCOG exams. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So symptoms of ovarian cancer, now these symptoms should be persistent for over 12 months and over 12 times a month. Um, persistent abdominal distension, abdominal bloating, early satiety and or loss of appetite, pelvic or abdominal pain, increased urinary urgency and or frequency and others like uh, postmenopause bleeding, unexplained weight loss, fatigue or changes in bowel habit. So um, for women aged above 50 years, um, they should have both a CA125 and ultrasound. Um, urgent referral to secondary care if both tests are abnormal or this pelvic and abdominal mass. If the risk of malignancy index is over or equal to 250, further investigations and referral to specialist gynecology centre um, along with MDT referral should take place. So risk reducing salpinger oophorectomy prevents development of epithelial ovarian cancer and reduces mortality in high risk uh, patients for epithelial ovarian cancer. So if a woman has, is under 40 years of age, um, they should also have um, AFB, HCG, CA125 tested to identify um, the non-epithelial ovarian lesions. Um, inhibin would be something um, that's raised in granulosa cell tumours. So if CA125 is elevated, uh, the pre-op CA125 to CEA ratio, um, if that's less than 25, especially in combination with elevated CA19.9, uh, um, this may indicate peritoneal uh, carcinomatosis from a GI tumour and a um, colonoscopy and a gastroscopy should be done prior to, the, um, to performing primary debulking surgery. So examinations um, should be done prior to deciding a uh, treatment. Uh, if a patient has presumed ovarian cancer, radiological staging will provide further information about the extent of disease and potential distance metastases or secondary cancers. CT prediction of suboptimal cytoreduction is not sufficiently reliable. MRI is not routinely done, but can be useful if results from ultrasound are not helpful in confirming a diagnosis, especially in a young woman with a solitary pelvic mass um, who would like her fertility to be spared. PET CT is not re recommended for routine pre-op staging. Offer cytotoxic chemotherapy with suspected advanced ovarian cancer, um, but first obtain a tissue diagnosis by histology in all cases except a few exceptions. Commence cytotoxic chemo for suspected of advanced cancer on basis of positive cytology alone and imaging and without histological confirmation in exceptional cases and where obtaining a tissue sample would be inappropriate. MDT should be, um, so these cases should all be discussed in an MDT. Risks and benefits should all be weighed along with patient's quality of life, patient choices and, um, and, and, and so forth. Ascites should be sent for cytology. The absence of malignant cells does not exclude ovarian malignancy, especially in presence of inflammation. Cytotoxic chemo should be offered for suspected advanced ovarian cancer. Histology should, um, uh, should be sent so diagnosis can be confirmed, and this is usually done by image-guided biopsy or laparoscopy, um, you know, in, in all cases except a few um, exceptions. Cytology alone, together with CA1 to 5, CA ratio of more than 25 to 1, may be sufficient in, in patients with poor pro, uh, performance status and where biopsy is not feasible. So routine laparoscopy for, for histology and to assess operability of surgery should is not recommended. Frozen section may be appropriately done, um, especially if this means that the, this result will alter intraoperative management. So high-grade um, cancers or grade 3 endometrioid ovarian adenocarcinomas is more than 10% risk of an underlying BRCA mutation, and these patients should be offered clinical genetic um, counselling and testing. 
Surgical treatment, so for suspected or confirmed early stage disease, and um, that suspected epithelial ovarian cancer, they can undergo surgery at a cancer center by a speciali specialized surgeon, which is a, who is a core member of the MDT team. The chemotherapy should be provided by a medical or a clinical oncologist who is also a core member of the MDT team. Affected women should all have an identified key worker and a responsible clinician um, that they can have and they can they can they can have all their queries um, answered uh, should they have any. So aim for surgery in early ovarian cancer stage one and two is complete macroscopic tumor resection and adequate surgical staging. Patients suitable for fertility sparing surgery should be identified by the MDT and both pros and cons of this should be discussed with them and also um, so the patient can make an informed choice. Early stage disease may be um, an, an unaccepted post-operative histological finding in cases that have been managed as a benign condition. A restaging procedure by a gynae oncologist um, could be advised to establish stage and possibly define type or, or necessity of adjuvant treatment. Adequate non-fertility sparing primary surgery for apparent early stage um, ovarian cancer consists of peritoneal washings, um, ascites, ascites uh, sampling taken prior to manipulation of the tumour, bilateral salpingia oophorectomy, total hysterectomy, multiple peritoneal biopsies from the paracolic spaces and uh, subdiaphragmatic spaces, bilaterally omentectomy and pelvic and bilateral paraaortic lymph node assessment up to the level of insertion of ovarian vessels in the absence of peritoneal dissemination. Rate of positive lymph nodes um, in mucinous tumours is very low and lymph node dissection therefore is not uh, needed. Appendicectomy should be performed if a um, mucinous tumour is suspected. Surgical management of primary advanced ovarian cancer. The surgery after three cycles of chemotherapy following initial low effort or diagnostic only surgery significantly lengthens progression free and overall survival in patients with advanced disease compared to no further surgery. A second look operation with cytoreductive reductive attempt after new adjuvant chemo following upfront debulking surgery with vestal disease despite maximum effort has no survival benefit is not recommended. The aim of cytoreductive reductive surgery is the management of advanced stage ovarian cancer. It's surgical resection of all visible disease in patients fit enough to undergo this procedure as this has been shown to be associated with an improved progression free and overall survival. New adjuvant chemo with uh, interval, uh, interval debulking surgery after three cycles of platinum-based chemotherapy is non-inferior to primary upfront uh, debulking surgery and adjuvant platinum-based chemo and has reduced morbidity in patient cohorts with significant disease burden and low complete macroscopic tumour clearance rates uh, or in situations where there is uncertainty about the possibility of optimal removal of the tumour. Um, advanced disease treatment uh, planned by MDT at cancer centres should have the infrastructure to support maximal surgical effort uh, for debulking with the aim of no macroscopic residual disease. Bulky lymph nodes in advanced disease should be removed if, if this will complete macroscopic clearance as this has shown to significantly prolong survival uh, and is part of debulking. So systemic treatment uh, of early stage ovarian cancer, so FIGO 1 and 2, adjuvant platinum-based chemo should be discussed and offered to all cases um, apart from low-grade uh, stage 1A and 1B. First-line chemo for advanced uh, disease, stage um, FIGO sorry, 2 to 4, new adjuvant chemo, uh, primary debulking surgery for complete or optimal cytoreduction. If this is not achie achievable, trials have shown non-inferiority of new adjuvant chemotherapy followed by interval debulking surgery. Um, both trials have, have demonstrated reduction in morbidity um, in the new adjuvant chemo uh, group and an equal quality of life in both arms. Post-op chemo, um, so advanced disease is um, carboplatin and paclitaxel three weekly for six cycles. If there's an, an allergy or an intolerance to paclitaxel, then combination of protein-bound paclitaxel um, like um, abraxane, carboplatin or um, peg-lighted um, 
liposomal um, doxorubicin carboplatin can be used. So first line chemotherapy, non-serious histological types is platinum taxane. So follow up, um, so history assessment of new and potential tumor related symptoms and clinical examination is essential at follow up visits. CA measurement is not mandatory and is not proven to be of survival benefit. Contact details of a key worker, so access for an early review for unexpected symptoms can be uh, can can take place. So management of recurrent disease, surgical treatment of recurrent disease, so cytoreductive surgery is offered with platinum sensitive ovarian cancer relapse where the disease appears complete resectable in patients with a good performance status. Patients be, should be aware that disease will remain chronic. Palliative surgery for bowel obstruction discussed after failure of conservative management, iatrogenic um, induced short bowel syndrome with the necessity of long life total parenteral nutrition should be avoided and plan for surgery should be agreed with MDT. Systemic um, treatment of recurrent disease, longer treatment free intervals, um, so greater than six months, combination therapies with platinum re re regarding challenge um, is not recommended. Short uh, treatment free interval, six, less than six months, single agent therapy is effective and less toxic than combination therapy. Other epithelial uh, histology subtypes, low-grade uh, serious ovarian cancer. Surgery is most effective uh, in management for this. Low response rate to chemo than high grade. 25% um, response rate seen with a platinum taxane regime in low grade. And given the lack of a superior alternative chemotherapy, this can be offered um, in, in patients with advanced disease. Mucinous carcinoma of the ovary, true advanced mucinous tumours of primary ovarian origin are rare and management and treatment strategies are limited. Ovarian mets from primary mucinous tumours of other organs like GI tract should be excluded. Borderline ovarian tumours, uh, complete surgical resection and surgical staging should take place with invasive peritoneal implants. Re they should be reclassified as low-grade ovarian cancers under the new fecal classification of 2014. Pelvic and periotic lymph node sampling to, to stage disease um, in, in cases of borderline tumours is not recommended in the absence of bulky lymph nodes. Borderline ovarian tumours to uh, receive fertility sparing surgery but high risk of relapse within um, within any remaining ovarian tissue. Regular ultrasound follow-up should take place. No evidence-based indication for cytotoxic chemotherapy in borderline ovarian tumours. Clinical management of borderline ovarian tumours includes complete macroscopic tumour resection, surgical staging which includes peritoneal biopsies, cytology, amentectomy and appendectomy for mucinous tumours. So establishing the diagnosis in secondary care, so you have uh, patients who have a diagnosis and pre-op uh, testing, calculate the risk of malignancy index for women under 40 years, check serum beta HCG, a, um, alpha beta protein, LDH to exclude germ cell tumours. If the RMI is over or equal to 250, refer to gynecological centre, um, specialist MDT. Perform CT, abdo, pelvis for staging of clinical features, CA1 to 5 and pelvic ultrasound suggestive of ovarian cancer, CT chest may be performed for staging. So risk of malignancy index is quite an important slide. Um, this is a very easy EMQ um, slash SBA question where they give you all these different features um, of um, the cancer and ask you to work out a score and then um, and then also the further investigation follow up for the patient. So, um, so RMI, risk of malignancy index, is calculated by multiplying the um, U, which is ultrasound features, with M, which is the menopausal status, and the CA125 of the patient. Um, so as you can see, ultrasound features, so there is, so they can, um, so ultrasound uh, result is scored one point for each of the following characteristics. So multilocular cyst, solid areas, metastases, um, ascites, and bilateral lesions. So if there is one um, feature, so if there's no feature, then that's zero. If there is one feature, that's ultrasound score of one. If there is any um, features between two and five, that gives you the ultrasound score maximum of three. The M is a menopausal status, so one is premenopausal and three is postmenopausal. So that's 
um, you multiply all that with the CE1 to 5 value in international units per mil and then work out um, what is the risk malignancy index for this patient. So this is the FIGO 2014 um, classification of uh, ovarian and fallopian tube tumours. Um, so it goes through, um, this, this is um, FIGO uh, 2000 and so stage 1A, 1B, 1C1, 1C2, 1C3, um, along with FIGO 2A and 2B. And then FIGO stage 3. And then FIGO stage 4A and 4B. Well, I hope this was uh, very useful for you, as I remember revising the oncology modules and completely giving up as, uh, as a really struggle to find the right information to learn for the exam. Um, and I feel like um, this summary of the guideline will hopefully give you a good uh, baseline structure to um, to then go and build upon if you if you like to read more, uh, but it also gives you all the adequate information that you do need to know for the exam, um, and it's quite a nice and and quite nice written guideline. And I would really encourage you to go and read it if you can. But hopefully, after listening to this, you will have a much better um, understanding of the guideline when you do go and read it yourself. Um, good luck for your exam, and I wish you all the best.